Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. Um, this video today, you're going to see me face, so there you go, enjoy. Um, I'm going to talk about my 2020 Fountain Pen predictions. Now, I know that we're heading already quite a way through 2020, amazingly, after the world's first ever January that went on for about 200 days. Uh, it just seemed to go on forever, so we're halfway through February now, so I thought, time to get this video out. I've had to think about this for a few weeks. Now, these are my 2020 fountain pen predictions for cheap fountain pens. I'm not even going to go into anything over, you know, $100, whatever it is. You know, I'm talking cheap fountain pens, which is what my channel is about. So, I'm going to get into it. I have done... A bit of research on this because I didn't want to just go in blind and go, oh, I'm just going to speculate and this is what I reckon is going to happen in 2020. I've done some little uh, bits of trend analysis, that type of thing. So without further ado, I'm just going to go straight into it. I'm going to start off with Lamy. Now, Lamy announced a few weeks ago um, their 2020 special edition pens. Now, they haven't really gone into too many details about it, but the tourmaline is a given. That's already available, as far as I'm aware, in um, in America. Certainly at Goulet Pens. Um, here in the UK, the usual retailers like Cult Pens, I think Pure Pens, but they haven't really mentioned it, but certainly Cult Pens, they are going to be stocking the Lamy All-Star Tourmaline from March. 2020 so we know that's going to be coming if it's not out already personally i find it is quite a similar teal blue to some of the other lamis so you think across between the um sort of um pacific blue crossed with the um oh there's a mint uh, a green version metallic version and it's kind of in between the two but it's almost certainly going to be a purchase for me because I think the All-Star is a really nice pen and I can't help but collect the things. Um, on the same subject, Lamy, we know for a fact that there will be, as last year, 2019, 2020, there will be three special edition Lamy Safari fountain pens. Now, this year, um, they're going, going to be called the Candy Rain. So it's Lamy Safari Candy and there's going to be three colours. There's going to be violet, which is surprisingly a violet colour. Um, aquamarine, which is a rather nice aquamarine colour. Um, possibly not quite as attractive as the uh, tourmaline all-star, but, you know, it's a Lamy Safari. And also a mango colour. Now, I really love the idea of the mango colour. It looks great from what I've seen in the photographs. All three pens in the candy series... Uh, they're going to be ABS plastic, like all the other Lamy Safaris. However, they will have a matte finish, so it's going to be slightly rough. And the clips around the uh, the edges, and I might as well just show you on uh, some of these other ones. These are um, last year's Lamy Pastels series. This one, I know this is funny, funny colour on the camera here. This one is the um, mint... Uh, mint green yeah mint green color um now the 20 as you can see it's unused so it's still got the uh, cardboard thing on there um the clips on the 2020 special edition Lamy safaris rather than being this chromed color finish they will actually be the same color as the pen so i don't know whether there's going to be some sort of um I don't know, coating on there or something, but I think it's going to look quite uh, quite nice. So, usual affair from Lamy for their special editions. Nibs will be steel, fine, medium, broad, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know what to expect. So, three more colours of the Lamy Safari to collect for all you Lamy Safari collectors out there. Um, I have also just... Might as well show you some pens because I don't want to just talk about stuff and not show you any fountain pens okay so this is the I'll try and get these in the light this is the blue macaron and this is the mint green so two Lamy safari special editions from the pastel series last year um 
and I like them they're just nice pens to collect so let's just pop these back in their little boxes keep them out of the way now so that's Lamy with their if you like cheap low-end pens I suspect later this year we will see a one maybe two uh, special editions of the Lamy Ion maybe I can't guarantee it but I have a feeling that the Ion is going to be one of these pens that they do try to promote a little bit more this year um, it's an interesting pen I have done a review of that so head on through my um, uh, do a search go through my playlists and under pen reviews or under Lamy it's another playlist uh, you'll be able to find my Lamy Ion review um, also the studio almost guaranteed certainly more likely than the um, um, ion uh, the Lamy studio will almost certainly come in at least one color possibly two later this year so don't know what that's going to be yet but I'm keeping my eyes peeled wait and see what happens uh, so what else have we got we talked about Lamy studios right on to the next one pen bbs now, my um, subscribers will have already seen my Pen BBS 308 review of Amber is a Cat. Now, look at this material. This acrylic is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and that was the main reason for doing this uh, review of this pen, the 308, was because of this lovely Chateauian amber-coloured black material really really nice material now pen bbs have already released the 500 um this year which to be honest sold out within about two weeks um i know that there is a pen bbs collectors group on facebook uh i think it's called taste the rainbow uh, taste the rainbow um and it's quite a useful thing and my god they follow everything so when PBS Pen BBS's official store starts to upload any um, any listings to Etsy, people go, "Yep, yeah, Etsy listings being updated," and they all jump on there and grab every single one of the pens in every colour that they can get. So, if you want one of these pens, you've got to be quick. So, Pen BBS they will undoubtedly release more fountain pens this year. Don't know what models. I mean, their models seem to be going down the route of um, different filling mechanisms at the moment. Fortunately, they're all piston types and none of these um, sack fillers. They haven't gone down that route, thank God. Um, so, nice pens from Pen BBS. I believe that their quality... Bugger. Uh, their quality uh, has increased a lot since I first bought my first Pen BBS pen in 2017. Uh, now they are really, really good. So expect more from Pen BBS. What about the acrylics? Now this amber is a cat material. Seem to have seem to have sold out in pretty much everything on their Etsy store. Um, you might be able to get these Pen BBS pens from other Chinese retailers or other retailers, in fact. Um, but it's getting a bit it's getting a bit difficult to get hold of certain uh, acrylics. So I'm going to be um, watching Pen BBS quite closely because their acrylics tend to be really, really quite good. Um, this acrylic has certainly been used in the Moonman uh, M800, uh, which is the Leonardo Memento Zero blatant ripoff. Um, but this material is lovely. So the same identical acrylic has turned up in that pen in the amber version. So I wouldn't be surprised if Pen BBS get hold of some more really nice interest in acrylics, which we do see sort of disappearing into other pens when they finish their production runs. I'm guessing they sell them on, uh, on, on the acrylic rods to a different manufacturer in China who then turns pens out of that. So that's Pen BBS. Going to be interesting to see where they go this year. Right, let's talk about Moon Man. Moon Man T1 interesting pen that came out late 2019 i've done a review of this pen i still have very mixed feelings about it i appreciate the fact that moon man 
do try to do occasionally different designs or they just blatantly rip off somebody else's uh, design to the T. So, you know, you've got a mixed, mixed thing with Moon Man here. I believe that the quality is quite good of Moon Man pens. It's not what I'd say absolutely fantastic, but for a cheap Chinese fountain pen, they've raised the bar. Um, we're almost certainly going to see more Moon Man pens this year because they were quite prolific in 2019 and 2018 even. I mean, we saw things like the Moon Man Wankai Mini, massively popular pen, big seller. Um, don't know how the sales of the T1 are doing because it's a little bit more expensive. Um, I know that my review of this pen certainly got quite a lot of review uh, of um, views. So people definitely are interested in the T1. Um, what else have I got here? I have got some Moonman M600s now. Moonman M600S comes in a variety of different finishes. Now, different acrylic materials. Now, I will say that whenever these seem to have come out, they seem to have very, very limited production runs. Um, I wanted a brown version of this pen and I've tried through three or four different Chinese sellers and they always say, yep, yeah, we have stock and you pay. Three weeks later, you get an email saying, oh, sorry, this pen isn't in stock. Here's a, here, would you like a refund? Yes, I bloody would. Um, so not impressed. Uh, basically, if you see a 600 in a new material this year and it's one that you like, I'd advise you to jump on it fairly pronto. You don't want to be hanging around with these pens. So maybe some of these pen BBS acrylics that we've seen in um, in their pens might end up in Moonman M600s, but I don't know. I'm thinking Moonman might be taking a slightly different approach to their uh, designs and basically marketing sales strategy this year. Uh, I think the M600 is Probably not going to be one of those pens that we see in different acrylics. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see where we are at the end of the year. Um, but I do have a little bit of a gripe with Moonman Fountain pens. And that is the fact that their price is going up. Their prices are, in my view, getting too high. Way too high. Um... Oh, and I'm just thinking, I'm just looking at a few of the notes that I've made here. Um, these are Chinese fountain pens. We've got steel nibs, the Moonman nibs, which are, in my view, all right. Uh, they write, they do work, but they're not brilliant. Um, I've had to adjust maybe 50% of the Moonman nibs. No, I'm a bit harsh, not 50%, probably more like 30% of all the Moon Man pens that I've got, I've had to adjust the nibs. I've certainly had to make them a lot wetter. Uh, doesn't help that Moon Man nibs almost always seem to be fine. Um, and I'm not a fan of fine nib pens, but that's what you get. You could swap them out for other nibs. Uh, and it is something that I do occasionally. Uh, but at the end of the day, you might pay a few extra pounds for a spare nib. And do you really want to add that to the cost of a pen, which should really write pretty damn good for the price um so where moon man are gonna head this year i don't know yet yeah, we'll certainly see new models from moon man they seem to have taken over from the likes of jin how do like other chinese manufacturers um what are they going to really come up with i'm not into I'm entirely sure uh but the the moon man if you any, anyone from China, Moon Man, is watching this video, please watch your prices because people are starting to th think that your prices are too high. You're just not worth it. You cannot price yourself that high. I mean, it's like the uh, Moon Man 800, M800, whatever it is. You know, you blatantly ripped off the Leonardo Memento Zero, which costs several hundred dollars but apparently is an excellent fountain pen. You've created a pen which kind of, yeah, it looks the part, but it's a Moonman nib, and you're charging $40 for it. 
sorry, but the Western world doesn't believe that the pen is worth that much from China. So just a bit, a bit of advice for you guys. Right, where are we? Delike, I've just mentioned them. Um, Delike, where did you go? You were one of my favourite brands when I first started my fountain pen journey way back in 2017. Because I love your little brass, Delight Classic Alpha brass fountain pen. Brilliant little pen. Uh, I have several in different finishes, different colours. I've even got the knockoffs, your Chinese knockoffs of Chinese fountain pens, which are a rip off of the Quebeco Sport. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, they haven't produced much in the last 12 months, in fact, more than 12 months. Delight have kind of disappeared. But in 2019, we did have the Delight Full Brass Fountain Pen, which was a rip-off of the Caveco Lillipot, which, in my view, was actually quite a nice little brass pen. Uh, it was available in raw black... Uh, raw black... Brass. Raw brass and brown, um, which was, yeah, quite a nice pen, available with a uh, bent extra fine nib, which, to be honest, was way superior to the fine nib. Um, I don't think we're going to see much else out of Delike anytime soon, so I'm kind of hold, not holding my breath on Delike. Uh, other Chinese manufacturers, Jin Hao. Right, well, late December into January this year, we saw these pens. So the Moonman M600S is a copy of the Parker Dewar Fold Centennial. Jin Hao came out with the Jin, Ho, Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial Fountain Pen, which basically, apart from the name Parker, they might as well <laughs> they might as well said Parker Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial. Um, and these pens, which I managed to get for half of the price that they were going at. Uh, shortly after I released my review, and the pens took about two or three weeks to get here, so it was almost like I got them as a um, sort of early bird price, and then they realised that these th these things were actually going to be damn popular, so they basically doubled the price. Um, they're not as attractive as the Moonman acrylics. I have done videos about these before, comparing these two side by side. So I have done reviews of the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial pens. These things. Um, and for the price I paid, I'm really happy with them. But if I'd have paid what they are going for now, would have been less so. Uh, these are not great value pens as the prices stand at the moment. These are still Jin Hao fountain pens. They are an awful lot better than the Jin Hao X450s that I love and, you know, they're good pens, these are much better, but not at about, I don't know, six times the price. Um, they're not that good. But I don't know whether we're going to see anything else from Jin Hao this year. I wouldn't have thought we'll see the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial in any other colours um, or uh, materials. These are plastic pens. The Moonman M600S is an acrylic. Uh, much nicer. But these write well, just Jin Hao seems to be yet another brand which is kind of falling off a cliff. So, where are we next? Let's talk about Caveco. Caveco from Germany. Not always China. There are some cheap bends. Mainly Germany, <laughs> thinking about it in this video. Caveco and Lamy. So, last year we had the special editions of the sport pen, which I've oh, got several here. Uh, these are the frosted sports. So 2019 was Caveco's year of the frosted sport pens. And I have got this lime green one, which is a nice frosted sort of translucent, but still glossy finish. Um, very nice. Uh, what's this one? Mango. I don't know. It, 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 all the pens have two words, basically. Lime, mango, and pitaya. This one's blush pitaya. I don't know why, but that one's stuck in my mind. So we've got pink, an orange, 
which is a peachy colour, and this pale um, green. And they are all really, really nice pens. Now, I love the Caveco Sport. It is one of my favourite pens. Um, I like the Lamy Safari, also one of my favourites, but the Caveco Sports always beat it just because I find that their nibs are better. However, I have had a lot of experience of people saying that I found the opposite and the Lamy nibs are way better than the Caveco nibs. So maybe I've just been lucky. So will Caveco release any more uh, colour variations of the Caveco Sport in 2020? Absolutely guaranteed. Yes, they will. Uh, we've already seen uh, Fonto Plumo, uh, the website there. They have got a special edition of the Caveco Sport in coral, which is quite a nice colour. So if you're a Caveco Sport collector, certainly check out Fonta Plumo because they have got that one. Um, and there's one that I'm really, really still debating about, and that is the Spanish-only exclusive uh, Caveco Sport in Orangina, which is a Orangina-coloured pen. Uh, it's bright orange, um, really summery orange looking pen. Um, because I think Caveco released six different colours. There was a banana colour, blue colour, trying to think what else there was. Oh, and a coconut, a white uh, version of the Frosted Sport last year. So six pens in total, as opposed to Lamy's three pastel colours for last year. Um, I don't know if the Caveco will be as prolific with these because if they are going into country-specific releases, maybe not. Um, but hopefully we will see some nice colours out of the Caveco Sport this year. So, almost, almost certainly guaranteed. Uh, and there, of course, we know that there are special editions already out there, such as the Fonto Plumo Coral. So, yeah, Caveco will be doing that. Um, what are we? Let's stay on the subject of Germany now. Diplomat mixed bag. Now, I'm going to talk about the Aero. I love the Aero, and I know that many of my viewers are into really inexpensive fountain pens, but I've managed to get hold of a few Aeros really, really inexpensively um, through second hand, basically on eBay. Uh, I've picked up damaged ones, ones with broken clips, had to repair the clip, things like that. So the Diplomat Aero is still part of the fountain pen journey on this channel because it is, in my view, a next level pen. It's right up there with the Lamy 2000. Um, but as far as low-end Diplomat fountain pens go, there's this thing, the Diplomat Magnum, which I suppose in many ways is their version of the Lamy uh, Safari. It's a very, very light plastic pen um, with an ink viewing window. And this rather sort of flat metal clip, pop cap, plastic triangular matte feed. It's a soft touch finish to the plastic, steel nib. Um, takes standard international cartridges and converters and has been released in different colours. I know Goulet pens have been, well, plugging this pen quite a few uh, times in their videos. Um, funny thing is, this evening I was looking at, I think it was one of the Fountain Pen Network um, things on Facebook, and somebody asked about the Diplomat Magnum, and they said, my Magnum, I'm really struggling for it, for, to get it to write really well. Is it the ink that I'm using? And I was one of the comments, <laughs> there were six comments when I last looked a few minutes ago. Uh, there were six comments on there and everyone was saying, oh, I thought it was just me. Uh, I thought it was the ink that I was using, which was dry. And I was with the other three commenters who basically said, yeah, I had one. It was such a rubbish pen, I just chucked it in the bin. Um, and this pen is absolute crap. Um... 20 quid these things cost, more than the Lamy Safaris, nowhere near as good. Do not bother with this damn pen. But we will see more colours and they will be promoted. 
Uh, there is a John Doe finish, which is a nice metallic looking blue red color with, I don't know, color changing everything. And it looks like a metallic pen. And then you get it and you find it's this really sort of lightweight, it's probably decent plastic, but ugh. And the writing experience is awful. I know some people have said it's great. Uh, for me, I've tinkered with this nib on this pen for at least an hour and could never get it to write. I believe that there's an issue with the feeds on these pens, uh, plastic feeds, which just aren't very good. Um, I have got a second Diplomat Magnum. I, these came in a job lot of pens, which I bought from eBay uh, in a lot. Um, and I haven't even felt the need to try the second one out because I dislike the pen that much. It's a horrible, lightweight... Ugh. No. <laughs> so, Diplomat Magnum, go, sp go spin. Uh, but there will be more colours. On the positive side, Diplomat are almost certainly going to release more colours or finishes of the Diplomat Aero, which is a great pen. So, looking forward to seeing what they are this year. I can't imagine what they are, because the last one was a hydrographically printed one, which was, wow, quite out there for a fountain pen finish. Um, right, let's move on. I'm going through the... Uh, where are we? 26 minutes already. Wow. Uh, right, back to Chinese fountain pen manufacturers. Fully one. Have I got any fully one pens? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so fully one. Now, their pens, they always seem to be knocking around in the uh, usual retail sites like Etsy and eBay for quite a long time. So you can usually get hold of these pens because they never seem to be that popular. Um... And some of the ones that I've bought in the early days were absolute rubbish. And the ones that I've bought more recently have been way, way better. Um, I'm not saying they're brilliant. I have had a few issues, like with this one, um, really hard starting. I've had to prime the feed on the pen to actually get it to write again. But once it's writing, it's fine. Uh, it's just that the nibs seem to dry out if you leave them for, uh, for a few days which is something that I'm not really finding with a lot of my other pens. Um, but anyway, interesting designs. Will we see anything new from Fully One this year? Probably. Uh, I can't imagine how anyone will know about it. I think it's just a case of just checking out the Etsy sellers and, um, and seeing what Fully One pens are available in 2020. So... There we go. That's Fully One. Where are we now? Oh, now I haven't got any... Um, over there, haven't got any of these fountain pens. Hong Dian seemed to appear last year on the scene uh, with a sort of stealthy matte black. I think they called it Forest, Dark Forest or something. Matte black pen, black nib. Um, people seem to really like it. Uh, wasn't interesting enough for me to make a purchase. It just looked like a generic black pen with a black nib. Um, Price was for an unknown brand, a little bit high here in the UK. I think it was ten dollars, and I thought, no, nah, don't fancy that. Um, so didn't buy that one. They have released a couple of pens fairly recently, and I think we'll see more pens from Hong Dian later this year. Was as to what they may be, who knows? Right, Twisby, um, love them or hate them. There's a lot of love or hate pens here. I mean, you think about it. Lamy, Caveco, Twisby. If you don't go with the Chinese manufacturers, people either absolutely love these pens and say they're the most reliable pens ever. Why would you buy Chinese pens? Or you go, these things are rubbish. Um, Twisby Eco T, special edition coral. 2019 edition, very nice pen. This has got a, uh, what is it, 1.1 stub nib and it's filled with Pilot Hiroshizuku Fuyu Yaki Gaki, I don't know, something like that. Winter Persimmon, basically. Uh, nice orange ink. Um, lovely to see it sloshing around in the uh, barrel there. Anyway, so Twisby, yes, they will be releasing more colours of their popular pens this year. As to what they may be, 
who knows last year everyone seemed to be jumping on either the pastel or the coral bandwagon so this year who knows could be anything um with the pantone color of the year being blue that's imaginative um you know i'm hoping we're not just going to see nothing but blue pens that would be rather rather boring so anyway see what twiz we come up with this year uh next pen that i want to talk about next manufacturer msbh now my msbh one fountain pen review and also the uh, comparison of the msbh one compared with the lamy 2000 videos were very very popular last year and i don't think many people had heard of that pen um to be absolutely honest it was a pen that i had in my edc rotation everyday carry uh for months i had the silver i have the silver version and the black version and i use them a lot for a very very long time in fact all summer last year and cleaned them up and decided not to get them out for a while because the writing experience was fine the fine nibs were a little bit toothy well, not toothy there was an awful lot of feedback um and i'm not a fan of fine nibs so i just thought nah move on to something broader for the winter uh but the msbh1 is a pseudo copy no it's not even a copy it looks like the lamy safari in fact i've got lamy safari here in a box um it looks a little bit like the lamy safari same matte finish but all metal not macrolon um decent enough clip nice pop cap similar sort of hooded nib but instead of this Lamy uh, 2000 did I, did I call this 2000 at the start can't remember I might have called it Safari uh, instead of the Lamy 2000 um, piston filling mechanism it's a cartridge converter which is in my view quite a nice feature um, so if you want a Lamy 2000 like pen uh, which actually doesn't have a uh, huge price tag or a piston filling system you want to use bottled ink uh, and use the converter then yeah msbh1 check it out worth a look uh what else have we got in here let's see oh well we've already discussed a bit about chinese copies of copies um what on earth are they uh, the chinese going to copy this year well it's interesting because I wasn't expecting any of them to copy the Leonardo Memento Zero um, like Moonman did, much to some people's disgust. Uh, I know it caused some sort of arguments in the fountain pen community, maybe because it was a pen that people really, really loved and nobody cares about the poor Lamy Safari. You know, it's been around since the 80s and, you know, copy it all you like. No one cares. Uh, but yeah the chinese will be copying something as to what that might be i don't know um i'm not even going to get into it because i don't want to cause any debates arguments whatever they are about copies clones emulations whatever you want to call them but the chinese will be taking some design elements from some pens and applying them to their own designs so that will happen uh right different manufacturing noodlers last year late last year noodlers uh introduced nathan tardiff introduced the noodlers triple tail fountain pen which was basically a three tined fountain pen sort of music nib um which was effectively a clear colorless demonstrator uh, an alternative to one of their other pens and I can't even remember the name of it because it's not a pen that I'd normally be interested in uh, but it only came in the clear colourless version now I suspect that Noodlers will bring that out in some coloured versions whether it will be a um, transparent finish most likely because the resin isn't the same one that they used in the Ahab so it doesn't smell like the Ahab does, so just be aware of that. Uh, whether they're going to be able to introduce some coloured variations of the noodless, noodless triple tail or not, I, I suspect they probably will. So I think we can expect to see those. 
Uh, right, Wing Song. Where did you go? You went the same way with Delight, hand in hand into the uh, sunset. Uh, we haven't seen much from Wing Song basically. Last year we saw the Wing Song 3013, which was really, really cheap, really, really good vacuum filling fountain pen, uh, which was copied by Paley, unless they were made by the same people and they just decided to stamp a different name on, uh, so that it became the Paley 013 in green and blue, and the other colours were all Wingsung 3013s. Uh, fine nib only, the fine nibs are really excellent, steel nibs on those pens, and brilliant. But we haven't seen much else from Wingsung. And it's a shame because there are some really good Chinese manufacturers who just kind of disappeared. Um, and it's, it, it is a pity because I do believe that Wing Sung actually made some really excellent pens. Uh, in all honesty, I think I actually prefer the writing experience of Wing Sung pens over any of the Moon Man pens. So, yeah. Anyway, so... Let's talk about the prices, because Wingsong were always affordable. And the Chinese manufacturers that we're seeing to be more popular now are affordable, but in my view, they are not good value. You've really got to pick and choose whether you want to pull the trigger on a pen purchase or not, because there are some stupid prices cropping up. I've already talked about $40 for the Moonman M800, you know, not for me, it's a Chinese fountain pen. Um, if it was a Lamy pen at that price, I'd have to think about it. So, yeah, they're going to have to watch their prices very carefully. Because I don't think the Western market is willing to accept that the quality has improved in Chinese fountain pens that much that you can charge those sort of prices. Quite honestly, it's a Chinese fountain pen I know how much these things cost to make because, I mean, the Wingsong 3008, excellent pen, piston filler, you could buy for about 99p, including postage, from China two years ago. They have not introduced fantastic new quality controls because the nibs are still the same. They're still the good nibs. They work. They write. They might not write brilliantly. Uh, Moonman T1, looking at you. Um, but they're not worth the price. The Chinese fountain pens, they are not worth £20. They're not worth £40. And if the Chinese think that everything that they churn out is going to be like the um, Jinhao Dua Fold Centennial, which shot up in price to about, I think this, I can't remember what the current prices are, but the last time I looked, these things were like £20 of, 18, 16 pounds, something like that, that sort of region, 16 to 20 quid for a plastic Jinhao pen. Why? It ain't worth it. It's Chinese. I can pick up a nice Lamy Safari for the same price or less. In fact, yes, less. You know, what are you thinking of? I'm not going to spend that sort of money on a Chinese pen. Um, so, it's all about value for money. I mean, the medium... Quality, quality has improved a bit, but yeah, not that sort of price. So we'll talk about that another time in another video because it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with as far as pricing goes in 2020. Right, uh, what else have we got? A couple of other things to discuss, three things in fact. We've got new brands. Will there be any new brands of fountain pens this year? Now, the Shanghai Pen Company operate several brands. We know that. The tooling and components seem to now be increasingly used, borrowed, recycled, sold on, whatever it is, between different pen manufacturers. So we're seeing the same sort of nibs, clips, feeds, different components of the fountain pens, including the acrylics, so the materials are often the same, in different manufacturers pens um, and sometimes like for example the Wingsong 3013 stroke Paley 013 um, I think we're seeing this sort of crossover same pen 
different brands. So that I think we're going to see more and more of that. Now, Pen BBS, we already talked about their acrylics. It's almost like their surplus acrylics end up with maybe even the Shanghai Pen Company and they manufacture pens out of that, which is why we see certain limited production runs of some coloured acrylics. Uh, well, who else are we thinking of? Let's see. I mean, uh, I know um, recently Chris Rap 52 did a video on the Trammel fountain pen, which is a new uh, manufacturer to me, a new brand, certainly, not necessarily a manufacturer, um, which was an interesting looking pen, slightly different. But once again, it's another slightly more expensive fountain pen um, from China, which, yeah, unknown brand, medium, dubious quality, who knows? I'm not, not saying anything, but yeah, possibly not worth the money. Uh, so there will be more and more of those, a bit like Hong Dian, for example, suddenly came out of nowhere, different manufacturer, different brand, whatever we want to call it. Uh, I don't know where we're going to head this year as far as trade from China goes because COVID-19, uh, the novel coronavirus, is certainly going to have big impacts on international trade, international movement and also possibly even the working conditions and economies of various countries and quite honestly, most specifically China. We've already seen um, Benny uh, from uh, Pen BBS say that some of the uh, pens will be... Are we even talking about the right shot? Anyway, sorry. Bobby Penn, he certainly has said he's, he's going to have a few delays. We know that mail going out of China is now being screened and sterilised, apparently. Um, it shouldn't be an issue on mail items because the uh, COVID-19 vi uh, COVID virus outside of the human body dies on surfaces after 72 hours, which when you think about it in the postal system, you know, if you buy something in the Western world from China, it takes three weeks to get here. So it, it isn't going to be contaminated from wherever it comes from. Uh, but there will be delays because obviously movements in some Chinese cities are already restricted things may get worse before they get better um, I'm not going to talk about the spread of the disease or any of the epidemiology as much as I'd like to because that's one of my things but um, yeah it's 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 going to have an impact and it may even have an impact as far as manufacturing goes um, we might not see as many pens being designed and therefore made early part of 2020 so i'm guessing that there may be a bit of a uh, bit of a dry spell from china uh, and their pen releases for the first half of 2020 uh, but watch this space who knows um i want to talk just briefly about inks chinese inks now i know jin hao had some branded inks out last year i bought a selection of cartridges in all the different colours from Amazon, which was really, really cheap. Um, there probably will be some more Chinese branded inks. I won't be buying them because the Jin Hao inks that I bought were either very meh or just awful. Um, very unsaturated, medium wetness, if you were lucky, but more more dry, very uh, very boring, washed out sort of colours. Um, so, yeah, not worth it. However, um, as with many Chinese brands, Jin Hao seems to be a brand that they like to slap onto things because people are aware of it. Uh, the Chinese technology manufacturer Xiaomi, uh, which is uh, actually X-I-A-O-M-I, -I, Xiaomi, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they have been making phones for a good few years of very good quality at very affordable prices. Now, they've created a bit of a brand name, and now the Xiaomi brand is slapped onto all sorts of things. So you'll see it for things like, I don't know, socks, toasters, hats, Xiaomi, yeah, 
show me this, show me that. Um, so maybe Jin Hao is going to appear on a few more inks or possibly one of the other pen manufacturers' uh, you know, brands. They might do their own branded inks. Um, given the number of new inks that we're going to see released from the more mainstream Western ink manufacturers, yeah, I don't really see any point in buying Chinese inks. Um, cheap Chinese pens are one thing, but the inks from China, quite honestly, no, not worth it. Um, let's see, have we got anything else that we can say about the inks? Yes, there was um, a recent poll, I believe it's still open, uh, for people in the UK. Um, I don't know whether it's UK only. <laughs> Could be, you might be able to do it anyway. Uh, on the Fountain Pens UK Facebook group, there is now a poll running for the Diamine Fountain Pen UK Ink of the Year. You can pick a colour. And it's at the pre-selection stage, so I think there were, I don't know, eight or nine colours you could choose from. Orange, teal, black, blue, green, all the rest of it. Um and the one with the most votes will then go into the next round and people can then say, well, yes, we want a teal ink. Just putting that one in there. That's what I voted for. Um, we want a teal ink. And last year it was purple. And a uh, diamine very nicely, kindly produced, not one, but two purple fountain inks. Special editions, uh, Mon Bodo's hat and Scribble Purple. Um, so two purple inks, people couldn't decide between the two, and Diamine went, hey, have both. And everyone went, yay, well happy. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be fun. Uh, and what else is going to happen? I'm going to talk about new affordable fountain pens. Now, remember, this is affordable fountain pens. I'm not talking about anything else. Um, Pelican this year, their Edelstein ink of the year is Moonstone, which I believe is most likely to be a grey ink. Um, I haven't seen any shots, photographs of the Moonstone ink yet. Uh, we've seen the marketing material, which does look quite nice, um, and it is something that I'll probably end up trying. Uh, and I guess also that there will be definitely a Moonstone version of the Pelican M205. Uh, coming out later this year, uh, which I'm guessing is going to be grey and match the Moonstone theme. Um, the M205s, if you aren't aware, tend to be more affordable. It's the affordable end of the Pelican range without getting into the really cheap Pelicanos, things like that. Um, they are, I'd say, mid-level, mid-tier pens. Uh, last year was, was the special edition Pelican M205 Star Ruby, uh, which, yeah, they're, they're good pens, but you pay a lot more for them. Uh, what else are we looking at now? Um, Parker, I'm just honestly getting into Parker a bit this year. My wife bought me a Parker uh, IM fountain pen, which is a lovely little pen, and I've been using quite a lot of the Parker jotters recently. At work and also the vectors so yeah these things plastic pens but very very nice for the price uh, we're not going to see anything new from Parker I wouldn't have thought uh, not at the affordable end of their uh, pen system um, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much uh, I think to be honest, the biggest letdown so far of 2020 is the uh, pilot um, Curidas. Have I even got the right name? Platinum Curidas. Is pilot or platinum? It's the pilot vanishing point, the platinum Curidas. Right, sorry about that, yeah. Platinum Curidas. What the hell, you know? This thing was being marketed as being really cheap, plastic, steel nib, I don't know, retractable nib, fountain pen. And I think most people were expecting the price to be around or under $50, 50 quid, 
50 pounds whatever it is and the pre-sale price on google pens under some of the american retailers was 64 dollars which some people went oh it's a little bit more than we expected and then the price changed and became something like 94 dollars or 89 dollars and everyone went whoa they're having a laugh uh which quite honestly i think it really annoyed quite a lot of people myself included uh uh, Colt Pens did a, I think it was Colt Pens, I might have got it wrong, sorry if I have. Uh, Colt Pens announced it in their uh, Panorama email that they would be stocking it from whenever it was, March probably this year. And one of my viewers informed me, because I did a video about it, and said, will you be, vi will you be buying the Platinum Curidas? And it's got quite a lot of comments, which is great. So thank you to all those of you who uh, commented there mixed feelings about it but everyone started leaning towards the the uh the way of 94 dollars for a fountain pen that's made of plastic which mm, no <laughs> uh and i was right there with you on that one um and colt pens i believe said that the pre-order price would be 95 pounds 95 pounds for an unknown quality plastic fountain pen is a massive no it just wasn't marketed well enough uh, so that could well be a huge flop uh, which is a disappointment because i think that they had the opportunity to really really make some waves in the fountain pen world if that had been a bit more affordable if you like but for people like myself who don't want to spend that sort of money on a plastic fountain pen yeah, I think they missed out there. So, first disappointment of 2020. Um, and there isn't really much else that I can really think of. That's 2020. What I personally believe is going to happen in the affordable fountain pen world this year. Um, so, I hope you found this interesting. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.